Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twin Zinc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. We back with people. How you doing today? Uh, once again, we do live recordings every Sunday, 3 p.m. ish. Come Eastern time. Coin join us on the chat team. Search that on YouTube. We'll be there. But every Sunday, live recording. But um, we back with another episode. We have a guest in the building, aka Quest Boogie. How you doing, sir? Doing well. Doing well. All right, and we have Seth the, Seth the Dark Child. He's not here because, you know, he, he went out partying and so-called allergies <laughs> he had right now, so we're going to rock remotely. <laughs> yeah, we're going there. We're doing that. I'm sorry. Shots fired. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, I know you see the title, and we got to talk about this. Simping getting out of hand. Simping is getting out of hand. So before we get the whole topic, Seth, Hitting people with some little background history of what this symphony is, what's going on. Okay, well, I'm look just to be clear and to level set, I'm looking at the urban dictionary. Um, the first the top definition of simple. When you infatuate over women, allowing them to take over your mind and cause you to do things for them that you wouldn't normally do. That's the first definition. Second definition is Treat the act of treating someone like a celebrity while getting treated like a fan. Okay? And the third one is simply it's the art of trying to act like a girl's boyfriend when you really don't even know her. When she has a boyfriend already or when she has explicitly stated she is not interested in you romantically. So those are the three defin- top three definitions of sin. So, what we're going, what we're going with that today, fellas? All right. So, Quest Boogie, yeah, what, what's your thoughts, brother, on the simp and getting out of hand? I definitely, definitely, definitely think it's getting out of hand. <clears throat> you know, to the mm-hmm. point to where it's praised, you know, in our modern culture now, right? So you got the, you know, back when we were younger, I'm not going to state my age, but, you know, you would hear about, you know, <laughs> With the wheel and you know, the guy, right? Guy putting on a, a cape, you know, trying to save mm-hmm. a chick or whatever the case may be. But you know, even now, you know, having conversations with people, you know, we can have a real conversation like we're having today, right? And you know, a lot of times we try to hold people accountable, try to hold women accountable for their actions because it seems like they're never held accountable, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> you know, you'll get some guy randomly. You know, uh, just simping. As a matter of fact, I saw it recently from a clip from The Bachelorette um, where, and you guys may be familiar with this, you may not. I've seen it on social media a few times. There's this one guy on The Bachelorette that held this woman accountable. She was having guys do crazy things, uh, I think, like do some type of, I don't know if it was some type of, uh, not necessarily a race or something. I had them doing crazy stuff that men would normally do. Right. Show their affection. I mean, it was. See, yeah, so she's been over backwards, make her. Right. Right. Like, jump through hoops. Imagine if you had a bunch of women that, you know, were, you know, trying to gain your affection and you're making a mud wrestle or something like that. Right, right, right. It would never fly. No. For a man to do, right? So he actually called her out on it. All the other men were simping. Like, they were going after him. Like, bro. Explain the point. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Right. You know? And, um, you know, I just think that how things are, you know, we're raised or a lot of men are raised that women are always right. They're these delicate flowers. When in actuality, (laughs) we can can go back to the Bible. Uh Uh-oh. You know what I mean? Sunday, preach. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know, Adam was brought down technically by Eve. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, not to get too deep on y'all, but... (laughs) You know, oh, I mean, we, we got time for that. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> end of the day, sometimes, you know, I understand a woman, and, you know, we all have mothers, and, you know, we want them to be treated with respect and stuff like that. But now some of these guys, like the uh, example that you gave or the description that you gave from the uh, dictionary, uh, mm-hmm. these guys that are treating these women like, you know, 
they're in a relationship and the women have already stated, you know, I'm not interested in you. Mm-hmm. So you're playing, mm-hmm. you know, you're playing, you know, the simp, basically. I mean, you you know, you're well, yeah, and, try, you know, kind of do everything you can to, you know, gain her approval, hoping she moves you out of that friend zone. Right. You know, uh, I, I just think it's pitiful. And also to even yep. add to that, simping causes a lot of these issues that we have out here with these black ladies, right? Because men out there are simping, and I'll give y'all a good example here. When you see ladies out here walk around with a bonnet on, oh. out in the pub, they're right. Right. Yeah. Um, Curlers. There's always one person that's going to still try to talk to the woman who her bonnet. I'm pretty sure I can almost guarantee you any woman who has one of bonnet outside and go to the store, whatever, a dude approached her and spit game to her, right? I right. promise you. Right. And the, the 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 conflict that I'm I'm using that for example is that because she's able to still get pulled by guys because she might have a fat booty or whatever, nice chest, gonna be cute in the face, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Guys will let that slide. So now she in her head thinking she, she, dumb, I don't care what you think. I got dudes who's going, you know what I'm saying, hot me regardless, regardless of where I'm bonding at. So I don't care what you say. Your your opinion don't matter to me because I got two other dudes over here hollering at me with my bonnet on. So now what? You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's a prime example of how when guys are simping on a whole level, it messes up for the mm-hmm. average, you know, for the person who's trying to keep a woman accountable. You understand what I'm saying, Seth? Yeah. Oh, 100. I mean, at this point, brothers, and I, I see it happening a little bit, especially on YouTube um, and, and social media, is that brothers are starting to develop a true bro code. Right? Right. And the, the dudes who are... In, um, basically ignoring Broco, they're still going to always be there. The, the the Derrick Jacksons and his clones are always going to be out there. But for the most part, a lot of men are. Well, let me let me let me state this right. YouTube is doing something right now that was never available to be done in in history, and that is that men from different parts of the country and different parts of the world are having the same conversation and it's developing a unified mindset like the buns, right? We don't like buns. We don't like weed. We don't like fake nails. We don't like fake eyelashes. And it's cool when you think just, you know, Twin Z don't like it. You know what I'm saying? It's cool when you think Quest Boogie don't like it. But when nobody, but all, but when 10 out of 15 men are telling you they don't like it and they're discussing how much they don't like it they're gonna, there's going to be a change we, we, are, we are developing a bro code and some of us are starting to stick to it so in the dudes that are simping they starting to stand out a lot because they look stupid to all the other men and eventually they'll get through for them that's my opinion and also, I just want to say this when it comes to the weave and stuff. Honestly, I don't mind weave every once in a while. But well, for me personally. It can't be part of your hair. Huh? It, it can't be part of your everyday attire. Right. No, no. And I get that. And this, like I say, for me, I don't mind it. My thing is this. As long as you use it where it looks like it's actually yours. Meaning, mm-hmm. I don't know to me, black women that has hair all the way down to their butt. You understand what exactly. I'm saying? Like, that's just, just too much. You're doing, boo. That's too much. I, now, if you have a braid, cool, boo. Just the long hair going all the way down. And then if you don't keep it up, you walk around with a little afro. And it's not afro, but it's all fizzled up because you ain't brushing it and wrapping up at night. Because all that long hair do come of work. See, y'all want the nice long hair, but it does come with work. You got to brush it every night and wrap it up and put it your bond on at night and cover it up. But the point I'm trying to make is this. This, if you, for me personally, weave. As long as you keep it looking natural, like it's yours, whatever, cool. Don't overdo it. And I'm not big on these colors. Yellow, orange, red. Okay, maybe a burgundy mm-hmm. mix in there, some highlights, but come on now. <laughs> Listen, come on now. Yellow hair, blue hair, and this woman be in this professional business place we work at, and they wonder why they can't get promoted or get opportunities, but you look around, you walk around, look like a Skittle. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. Like, come yeah. on now, but once again, because men are not keeping them accountable, when she does with that yellow hair, I might be like, no. 
Quest Boogie made me know. Seth Darchel might be like, hell no. But to be another guy like, oh, baby, I don't care what they say. You look good. Forget what they say. They don't know what they're talking about. They ain't no real man. Simple alert. Simple alert. No man don't need a ball with no woman's hair. Simple alert. Simple alert. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, Quest. Come on. I'm sorry. Did you? Where you want to go with this subject? You know, I just felt like you know it's something that needs to be brought up, right? Because we talk, you know, we talk about women all the time, and you know, sometimes why they do the things that they do, or they get away with the things that they get away with. Mm-hmm. By and large, you know, a portion of us men allow it to happen, or you know, we incentivize it. Yep. You know, so uh, some of that behavior, I mean, if, you know, all men stood together, we nipped it in the bud, you know, we might have, you know, might have better results. But you got so many, you know, men that are treating these women like, like they're celebrities or like they're God's gift to men. And I say this to even add that. And, I, and I've been guilty of this. But, fellas, I'm going to need y'all to start choosing more violence. And to give you an example, Wait. right? Hey, let me let me explain so you go crazy. Violence, domestic, no, not that type of violence. I'm referring to when you're in a relationship, well, regardless, relationship, marriage, whatever case may be, there be times where you won't say nothing because you want to keep the peace. Man, oh. bump that. Like, turn that bitch up because that one thing that you let slide for two or three years, well, it's going to be a problem come year five or six when you're going crazy because the person keep doing it. Right, but you didn't say that in the first two years when it happened to correct it. You let it slid so long, now it become a norm to them, right? So when you do bring it up, they'll hit you. What's wrong with you? You know, you know, like, like, like it's your problem that whatever you're going through, you don't like it doing. It's your problem, but you bring it to the attention. But that's because we have chosen nonviolence. Nah, when something happens at this point now, fellas, address that thing day one. Don't let nothing slide. Nothing. I have been guilty of that. Yes, I have, and I'm ashamed of myself. Hey, I, me too. I've been there. Let's stop slapping so long. Then when I finally say something, I'm like, I'm crazy. Like, I got a third eye popped in my head. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? So, yes, yeah. that's another example of simping. And most of it is because we did not know, right? I did not know me not me not trying to keep the peace with simping. Or not just simping oh. hurt my relationship in the long run. Cause that's all I was, all I was doing. Because you want a happy house, happy wife. Sure. No one's arguing, fighting at time. Sometimes you guys, no. Nah. You know, I, you know what? I don't want to fly with that one. Here, I, I want to. I want to really hit that nail on the head. Go ahead. Because it's how we raise our kids and stuff. My mom, I single parent household, right? Well, nobody checked my mom ever. And if you said something to my mama when I was a kid, I seen my mama fight. My mama throw hands. Now, you know, well, my mama used to throw hands. Let's correct that, right? And of course, I got three sisters, so I was the only boy in the house. I got three sisters, and I physically fought my sisters. I mean, kids would tear a house up, and I ain't gonna lie and say I won every fight till I got to a certain age. So I grew up with that. I. Fight black, and you know if you say something to a black woman, they will stand their ground, and and you you don't want that, and that's how it's taught. It's not just in the media; it's like in your household. Black women, black women have. I'm sorry, being black, I'm not just gonna go off on black women, but I'm saying for my own anecdotal evidence is that black women will fight, and and you realize that if you were dealing with a black woman. It's easier to let them run, do what they want to do, because at the end, when they lose a fight, they the first ones to call the police, even if they started the fight. Facts. You know, so they don't play, they don't play fair at all. But that's what I did. So we either with my ex wife, um, I did let I let stuff slide because I was sadly enough I was weak. And I did not want my, to end my relationship over something that I figured was a little minor transgression. As it adds up over the years, you realize that you're being played for a sucker, but you've been trying to keep the peace for an exceptionally long time, right? So yeah, right now, I don't let nothing slide. I call it, I call it that day 
if you if you violate in public, I will discipline you. I'll call it in public. Facts. If you and if if you the louder you get, the louder I'll get. Because I'm not gonna have you act a fool in public anymore, and then get home behind closed doors and try to have a rational conversation. Nope. Keep you that can same stay energy. Here, you can get out of my car. Exactly. Keep that same energy because and I will and my children are learning better. I messed up. Because I was raised as a, as a boy in a single parent household with three sisters, I let black women run crazy. Them days is over. Now I'm a dark child now. <laughs> Anything else you want to add to that, set? Me, uh, Chris Boogie? <laughs> no, I think you pretty much said it. Nailed it on the head. I mean, yeah. It, it always comes back to the conversation we always had all the time, and that's accountability. And women never keep other women accountable. It's just that simple. Never. And that's the problem. So you might get tired of us talking about black women or women, period. But first off, we talk about black women because that's who we deal with, right? Mm-hmm. And in, in our community, 80% of our black women are leaving their husbands. So when y'all start saying about the, all the white people, and all, we don't care about them. I don't care about the dudes who step out and talk to other white women. I don't care about that. Because in the day, our number's still higher. <laughs> black women are leaving women at 80% rate. That is a high yep. number. And then when they be like, well, why are you leaving? Okay, men cheat. It's like 23%. Women cheat 18%. That's not a big I jump. Call, I call bullshit on that. that so, so well, listen, though. If if because I don't know, I know I'm close, but not exactly. But if it is twenty three three percent of men, right? Three percent of married men, they're cheating, and eighteen percent of married women are cheating. But eighty percent of women are leaving. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. clearly, 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 eighty percent is a bigger chance of if women are cheating. Sixty percent women are cheating, but eighty percent of women are leaving. Come on now, the math don't add up at all. Don't matter. Don't matter. Don't add up at all. I, Go ahead, I saw a video on YouTube, and a woman was bragging. Um, she said that, oh, no. I went, the question was, who cheats better, women. men or women? Right. And, see how you said that, women. Now, actually, when they say women are cheating at 18% and men cheating at 24%, which is, actually, I heard an updated stat. It's more like 23% and 24%. But it doesn't really matter. Right. Because if you cheat better than me and you get away with it better, guess what you most likely did? Lied. <laughs> you, you did not answer that statement truthfully. Because we all have, been, we've all been in relationships. You really going to tell me women cheat at, lower, at a lower percentage than me? Hey, listen, to even add to that, we all been in relationship. We actually all, probably all three of us probably been that guy. Like I was was always with that guy who had a woman who was married or had a boyfriend and all that stuff and she on the phone I'm smacking it from the back, whatever, and talking to him, like so we know that things happen. So you can't sit here and be like, Oh no, I I would never do that. I I was that guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I'm the guy, like I'm the cool guy who did it all. I'm just saying I've been in play relationship where women I dated often were always single. All of them weren't just unmarried. Right. So I know mm-hmm. how I work because I was that guy. So once again, and these women will go back home to their husband like nothing happened after I did whatever I want to do. Go back home to their own family, kiss the husband, all that good stuff. So miss me all that stuff right there. Yep. It's a fact. We're not rolling that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, but the simping, though, got to stop. Definitely. It has got to stop. It has to stop. And it, I put simping and cap at the same time. Like, those things go hand yep. in hand. Like, dude, stop the cap. Stop the simp. Well, I, I will say that for the for simping, it has to stop because it, it isn't just giving them unrealistic expectations. The same as wearing bonnets is supposed to be acceptable in public. But when you have people like, um, who was that? Um, a basketball player. Was it James Harden? Just got accused. Just got um. Yep. Accused of giving what? Sweetie, swatty, sweet, sweet, swatty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, hundred, hundred k just to go out. Right, bro. 
that kind of simple. That's super and, simple. And, you, and, and if you get if you did that to her, then all all ball players should be expected to give IG models a hundred k just to go out. Right. See, prime example. <laughs> but see, that's the problem though. <laughs> Salute to you, James Harden, on the court. You're a ball player on the court. You're the man. Top score. Good job. Salute to you. But off the court, this is what you're doing, well, man. You're hurting not just men, but even your brothers who play in the NBA with you as well. Like, I got to give a girl $100,000 to hope that she goes on a date. And then, two, she doesn't expose me because she clearly exposed you. So, she really don't really think nothing about you if that. If somebody give me hundred thousand dollars, you're not gonna know somebody give me hundred thousand dollars. First off, that's number one. Right. So the fact that it got out, that means because either her, she sent it to her home girl, or she ran her mouth. She ain't loyal, like Chris Brown said. Salute. For real, hundred thousand dollars, dude. That's straight. Like really, forty dollars really? what you need if you, if you try if you really try and get off. But you're James Harden, bro. You can probably get any other woman in the world. And why we keep chasing the same girl that every other dude had? Right. Like, bro, you well, can go, you can go anywhere, pull anyone you want, just because who you are. Oh, and I just want to, I just want to point out one thing about James Harden. That's why, that's why Kevin Samuels does not consider entertainers, musicians, and ball players as mm-hmm. high value men. Because you got money, you didn't work for money doesn't mean anything to you, and you do stupid stuff like this that unbalances the equation. Right. That, so that's why we don't. That's why we don't even compare ourselves to ballers. If, if my girl told me, oh, I was a groupie, I'd never date you. Nope, never play that game with you. Because you, stu- you got stupidly unrealistic expectations. <laughs> so, that, but that, that's, the, that's the simping part right there. Oh, you, it ain't even that you look cute. You're not even, she looks okay. I'm not going to say she's ugly. But $100,000 just for a date? Really? Is that, is that what it's called? Right. And listen, get your money, boo. If a dude won't give you the money, that's cool, right? Whatever. Get your money. Yeah, if a girl, I'm if a woman throws her at me, cool, I'll take it. I ain't going to say nothing, but I'll definitely take it. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, is that the other women are her. Her. Now, imagine, imagine the next dude who got to try to talk to her now. Mm-hmm. How how about mm-hmm. the match to James Harden? I went from what? The one to do from the Migos? I don't, I don't know if one was her boyfriend, but she was dating a guy from one of the Migos. So he well, gave him sweetie check. Yeah, she's with James Harden now. She, do not the she. No. He's, that's the one he I'm gave money to. Really? That's the one he gave a thousand dollars to a hundred thousand dollars to go out on a date, to hang out, or even it was just all Netflix chill, all that stuff. A hundred thousand dollars for what? Right, Bruh, You can go anywhere bro. and pull you anything. This is who you are. Right. At the no, end of basketball bro, you games, can, you, you can this. you can buy women. You can buy them, like physically own them. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he buy. But it, but then once again, that's that's once again is a prime example of, of simping, lady. So if because for one to understand what something is, uh, what what it looks like, that's a prime example right there. That man should be more confident in himself to get game and speak to a woman even better than her. You understand what I'm saying? Like you can go right. if you want to spend that money, you can go and say you can go to a strip club. Get a woman, save her easily. Save her, if, if, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's all you did when you got sweaty, right? Right. There's no difference. You could have picked. You could have picked and chose a woman, and made her how you want, and made her yours. And she would have said nothing. She took her money, and you would have not been exposed now. Because now, now when you play games this year and next year, boy, we're talking shit to you. Oh, you just giving girls a hundred thousand dollars out here, huh? Like that's a, I'm talking mad shit to you if I'm one on one against you. But anywho, that's that's sipping gone bad right there, and he going way too hard for a girl that everyone probably had. Like, she's not even up there. Yeah. So that's how we feel about sipping. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say before we wrap this up here, uh, uh, Boogie Quest Boogie? No, I think it's pretty. I think we're all in you know unison and agreement. Uh, pretty much with our views. I mean. I think we're all on the same page. I don't think it's much else. To, hey, now I'm with say. you. Except the dark child. Anything else you want to say before we close it out? Yeah. Well, I just want to make the same observation I always make. No matter if you, if, if a lot of people watching this or not, I just always want to point out and have on record that twins and 
Quiz Boogie, except the dark child, we all got different backgrounds. We grew up in different neighborhoods. We do different things. And yet, when we get together and have this conversation, this is the same conversation across the board. Ladies, y'all, y'all looking down the barrel of a gun, and y'all better figure it out quick. That's all I'm saying. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for, the, thanks for tuning in to the Chop Team. Once again, we're back Sunday, live recording on YouTube, the Chop Team. Follow us, subscribe, like, share, dislike, doesn't matter. But uh, any interaction, let us know. Questions, you can message us on the IG, the Chop Team, or even send an email, the Chop Team at Gmail. Thanks for tuning in. We out.